All right, in this video, we're just gonna do three more examples of putting everything together. So I already have circled A, B, D, and C in this equation, and you can see B is already factored out. So we're gonna go straight to calculating the amplitude. A is a positive one half, so its absolute value is a positive one half. When I calculate the period, I get two pi over B, and B is two, so I get pi for my period. Uh, my phase shift, I should see a shift of positive pi over 4, so we'll be shifting our graph to the right. And then I see a nice vertical shift of 2. So I'm going to mark off my vertical shift right off the bat. Oh, I really wanted, I really wanted, oops, yellow. So let's go ahead and mark off our vertical shift, y equals 2. All right, so let's get um, down to solving for the beginning. I'm going to set 2 times x minus pi over 4 equal to 0. And when I solve, when I divide by 2, I get x minus pi over 4 equals 0. x equals pi over 4. So we're going to start at pi over 4. And where will we end? Let's see. We're going to set this equal to 2 pi. And when I divide both sides by 2, I get pi on the right hand side. And when I add pi over 4, I get 5 pi over 4. So that's nice. There's a nice width of 4 there. So I'm going to mark pi over 4 and then count by pi over 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi over 4. And that should be very easy to find the labels for these. 2 pi over 4 reduces to pi over 2. And then this would be 4 pi over 4 reduces to pi. So I'm also going to count backwards. I want 1, 2, 3, 4 of these big jumps forward. So I'm going to go backwards 1, 2, 3, 4. And that is the beginning of another period. So I know that's 0, negative pi over 4 negative 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2, and negative 3 pi over 4. So let's go ahead and erase uh, my little jump here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and plot these points. I know when I plug in the beginning, the first quarter, the middle, the third quarter, and the end, I get these y values for sine. So at pi over 4, I get 2 plus 1 half times 0. At pi over 2, I get 2 plus 1 half times 1. At 3 pi over 4, I get 2 plus 1 half times 0. At pi, I get 2 plus 1 half times negative 1. And at 5 pi over 4, I get 2 plus 1 half times 0. So let's calculate that. The first one will be up at 2. The second point will be 2 plus a half. The third point will be at 2 again. At pi, I'm going to subtract a half from 2. And then at 5 pi over 4, I am right at 2 again. So when I connect those dots, I get this graph. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that graph over to my second period here. And that is the graph of this function. So now let's go ahead and move this up to our next example. All right. I've, I have A, B, C, and D already circled for us. So I'm going to get straight to, oh, and B is already factored out. So I'm going to get straight to calculating my amplitude, which is the absolute value of a positive 2 is 2. My period will be 2 pi over 4 or pi over 2. I have a phase shift of pi over 6. And then I have a vertical shift of negative 1 or down 1. And so again, I'm going to go ahead and pencil in my nice vertical shift so I don't forget it. 
equals negative one. All right, so I have to, since I have a phase shift, I need to go ahead and calculate my beginning and my ending point. My beginning point is going to be four times x minus pi over six equals zero. When I divide both sides by four, I get x minus pi over six equals zero and x equals pi over six. My ending point will be four times x minus pi over six equals two pi this time. Then when I divide by four, I get x minus pi over six equals pi over two. And when I add pi over six, I get three pi over six plus pi over six is four pi over six or two pi over three. So I'm gonna mark the beginning and the end out. So that will give me pi over six and then I'm gonna count three to get four pi over six or two pi over three. So my midpoint is going to be, if I add these two, so pi over six and four pi over six is five pi over six, but I have to divide that by two, so I get five pi over 12. So now I have to find a midpoint in these regions. So pi over six is two pi over 12, so two pi and five pi is seven pi over 12, but now I have to divide by two, to get seven pi over 24. And then two pi over three is gonna be eight pi over 12. Eight and five is 13 pi over 12, but I must divide that by two to get 13 pi over 24. All right, so let's go backwards. I counted three forwards to get to the end of my period, so I'm gonna count three backwards. And I know I'm counting by a width of pi over six, because that's what I labeled right there on my axes. So when I count by pi over six, I get one, two pi over six, which is a negative pi over three. All right, so now how do I label this? Well, the midpoint here is going to be Let's see, if I add these two, I get a negative two pi over six, and pi over six is pi over six, but I'm dividing by two to find the midpoint, so I get pi over 12. Now the midpoint in here, let's see, negative pi over 12 um, and positive two pi over 12 is going to be a pi over 12, but divided by two is gonna give me pi over 24. So now when I have a negative four pi over 12 and a negative pi over 12, I get a negative five pi over 12, but I have to divide that by two, so I get negative five pi over 24. So this was the beginning and this was the end of my period. I know that for cosine, I have a nice cosine um, T table. I get cosine of x, zero pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. My cosine is one, zero, negative one, zero, and one. And I know when I plug in my beginning, quartile, middle, um, three quarters, and end points, I get these y values. So when I plug in pi over six, I get negative one plus two times, the cosine of zero is one, if I plug in seven pi over 24, I get negative one plus two times zero um, at five pi over 12. I get negative one plus two times negative one at 13 pi over 24. I get negative one plus two times zero and at two pi over three, I get negative one plus two times one. So let's figure what those are gonna be. So two minus one is one. Well, two or negative one plus zero is negative one. Negative one minus two is negative three. Uh, negative one plus zero is gonna be negative one, and then negative one plus two is gonna be one. 
All right, so let's get rid of my loop-de-loops here and draw my one period of my graph in, and then I will copy it to my second period. So I'm here, I am here, I am here, I am here, and there we go. There's the graph over two periods. One more example here. Hopefully this one will go fast. All right, so I circled my A, C, and B. I have no D this time, no phase shift, which makes my graphing a little bit easier. My amplitude is a negative two-thirds, so its absolute value is two-thirds. My period is going to be 2 pi over b, and b in this case is 3 fourths, so I get a pi over 3. Um, my vertical shift is going to be a positive 1, so we'll be moving our graph up by 1, and we have no phase shift. Okay, so let's calculate. Oh, we don't even have to calculate the beginning because I know without a phase shift I start at 0, and now I need 8 pi over 3, so I don't have 8 tick marks, so I'm going to create more of them. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is 8 pi over 3. I'm going to cut that in half for 4 pi over 3. When I cut that in half, I get 6 pi over 3, or 2 pi. And when I cut this distance in half, I get 2 pi over 3. All right, so that's my first period. And then if I go backwards and cut these in half and label I have how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. I'll go backwards eight, two, four, six, eight, negative eight pi over three. The middle one is negative four pi over three. Negative six pi over three is negative two pi, and this middle one here is gonna be negative two pi over three. All right, so I know from my chart that if I create this with sine in here, 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, I get a 0, 1, a 0, a negative 1, and a 0. So when I start off at 0, I get a 1 minus 2 thirds times the y value at 0, which is 0. At 2 pi over 3, I get 1 minus 2 thirds times 1. At 4 pi over 3, I get 1 minus 2 thirds times 0. And at 2 pi, I should get 1 minus 2 thirds negative 1. And then at 8 pi over 3, I should get 1 minus 2 thirds times 0. So I know this is, I have a phase shift of positive, I mean a vertical shift of positive 1. I'm going to denote that with a nice dashed line because it's not really part of my graph. So when I calculate this at 0, I'm up at 1. Okay, so at 2 pi over 3, I'm subtracting 2 thirds, so I'm down at 1 third. At 4 pi over 3, I get 1 again. At 2 pi, ah, this negative and this negative makes that a positive, so I'm adding 2 pi over 3. And then at 8 pi, I'm getting 0 again. So when I copy those points over to my other period, I can finish this graph off very nicely, and I am done.